the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you. Over. That would be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you do. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with America in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this Earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done and one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations and with interest and a curiosity and and with the vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Look forward to that very much, sir. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, over. Roger, I've got a P-22 auto, optics pad, auto optics pad for you.
first flight column. Trip of ours to the moon may have looked to you simple or easy. I'd like to assure you that that has not been the case. The Saturn V rocket, which put us into orbit, is an incredibly complicated piece of machinery, every piece of which works flawlessly. This computer up above my head has a 38,000 word vocabulary, each word of which has been very carefully chosen to be of the utmost value to us, the crew. This switch, which I have in my hand now, has over 300 counterparts in the command module alone. There's one single switch design. In addition to that, there are a myriad of circuit breakers, levers, rods, and other associated controls. The SPS engine, our large rocket engine, on the aft end of our service module, must have performed flawlessly or we would have been stranded in lunar orbit. The parachute up above my head must work perfectly tomorrow or we will plummet into the ocean. We have always had confidence that all this equipment will work and work properly, and we continue to have confidence that it will do so for the remainder of the flight. All this is possible only through the blood, sweat, and tears of a number of people, the American workmen who put these pieces of machinery together at the factory. Second, the painstaking work done by the various test teams during the assembly and the retest after assembly. And finally, the people at the Manned Spacecraft Center, both in management, in mission planning, in flight control, and last but not least, in crew training. This operation is somewhat like the periscope of a submarine. All you see is the three of us, but beneath the surface, are thousands and thousands of others. And to all those, I would like to say thank you very much. 11, this is Houston. We're getting a good picture of Buzz now, but no voice modulation. And would you open up the F-stop on the TV camera? Uh, try a 2-2, please. That appears to be a lot better now. We're still not receiving Buzz's audio. Good evening. I'd like to discuss with you a few of the more symbolic aspects of the flight of our mission, Apollo 11. As we've been discussing the events that have taken place in the past two or three days here on board our spacecraft, we've come to the conclusion that this has been far more than three men on a voyage to the moon. More still than the efforts of a government and industry team. More even than the efforts of one nation. We feel that this stands as a symbol of the insatiable curiosity of all mankind to explore the unknown. Neil's statement the other day upon first setting foot on the surface of the moon, this is a small step for a man, but a great leap for mankind, I believe sums up these feelings very nicely. We accepted the challenge of going to the moon. The acceptance of this challenge was inevitable. The relative ease with which we carried out our mission, I believe, is a tribute to the timeliness of that acceptance. Today, I feel we're fully capable of accepting expanded roles in the exploration of space. In retrospect, we have all been particularly pleased with the call signs that we very laboriously chose for our spacecraft, Columbia and Eagle. We've been particularly pleased with the emblem of our flight, depicting the U.S. Eagle, bringing the universal symbol of peace from the Earth, from the planet Earth, to the moon, that symbol being the olive branch. It was our overall crew choice to deposit a replica of this symbol on the moon. Personally, in reflecting the events of the past several days, a verse from the Psalms comes to mind to me. 
When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The responsibility for this flight lies first with, with history and with the giants of science who have preceded this effort. Next to the American people who have, through their will, indicated their desire. Next to four administrations and their congresses for implementing that will. And then to the agency and industry team that built our spacecraft. The Saturn, the Columbia, the Eagle, and the little EMU, the spacesuit and backpack that was our small spacecraft out on the lunar surface. We'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft who did the construction, the design, the test, and put their, their heart and all their abilities in, into those crafts. To those people, tonight we give a special thank you. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, God bless you. Good night from Apollo 11. Dans un instant, nous visiterons un des plus beaux villages de France. Inscrit, s'il vous plaît, au patrimoine mondial de l'humanité. Ave Caesar, Pontifex Maximus, Pater Patriae, Imperator, Jules César. Demain à 20h40, NEC Plus Ultra, c'est en direct de Salzbourg.